Right, we're with Wellington manager Kevin Oakes after a 2-2 draw at Fisher today. Um, I thought we kept going quite well, probably testament that we scored at the end of each half, but that's two league games running now, Kevin, that we've let a late equaliser in. Yeah, frustrating. I mean, you know, there's some words being mentioned at the end, like devastating and, you know, all this sort of stuff. I think that would be easy to use harsh words 30 seconds after the end of the game. I, I think in the cold light of day, um, yes, of course, you're disappointed that you get pegged back. I think we need to take the positives at all times. You know, I'm generally a positive person. Um, yes, of course, we need to learn from our mistakes, but we don't want to be crucifying people. There's a lot of heads down understandably because they're disappointed with the result, but they certainly shouldn't be disappointed with the performance. And if you get the performances right, and people follow instructions and they're fit enough and trust their teammates and all the other things that we ask of them, the results will more often than not follow, but you, you don't always get the rub of the green, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, so, yeah, frustrating, but, um, you know, undefeated. We are playing catch up on other teams. I know saying undefeated after playing two matches probably don't mean much, but, um, I think fitness today did tell. You know, we know um, that Fisher are going to be young and athletic. Traditionally, AJ gets his lads, you know, well organised and, and running around and, and really, really working hard, which is to his credit. Um, we haven't played as many games as other people, and you would expect our sharpness to be off a little bit as a result. But you know, we need to change that. It's not an excuse at all. Um, it's to their credit, and if, if we can get the same level of fitness into our boys over the next few weeks as the, the games start coming a little bit more regularly, then um, we're only going to look better for it. Fisher set their stall out early on, Kev. I mean, most people in the crowd had their necks craning back, looking at the ball in the air for the first few minutes. Would you, were you a bit surprised that they were a bit direct and trying to turn us round? Um, based on the feedback I've had from somebody that, that has watched them twice, I wouldn't say surprised, because um, I think they did the same in the, the report that I'd had. Um, I think they're capable of, of more. I mean, how they choose to play, that's entirely up to them. But they, they've got some good boys in their side. Um, but yeah, if they want to play direct, we, we need to deal with that, don't we? Um, but we did deal with it, ultimately, because we're 2-1 up in injury time? I think so. I think Fisher probably had the best, te you know, best of the first 10 or 15 minutes. And then the game settled down a little bit and we started to play a bit better and we had a few chances. Uh, I think the draw overall is probably a, a fair result. Same as Crowbar, it's just the way it comes about that it feels like a defeat when it's not. Um, good first goal for us. It's a good strong run. Bullied the defender, got in behind and a good yeah. finish. Yeah, Cole's done well. You know, I said the other week I felt a bit for him a little bit that when he has played, um, he's not quite had that rub of the green. You know, every 50 50 has gone against him. Every time the ball's going to drop somewhere, it's always dropping to the defender. Um, and it's about keeping him believing in himself and, and putting his body in the right areas and working hard and eventually we'll get the rub of the green and he's, he's worked hard, he, he's run, driven across the front of the defender, got in the penalty area, no messing about, hit the target and um, yeah, fully deserves his goal, well done. Um, I thought it was a bit unlucky, the penalty for them, because it seemed to bounce and, and hit his hand rather than anything. Um, yeah, I think they, they've won it cheaply on the back post, uh, I don't think their player there was, was picked up. I think we were maybe assuming it was going to go out the, out the back or off the field. Uh, he's done very well to nod it back across and then it's gone across one or two players that have, have maybe been wrong footed and, and it's clipped somebody's hand when for me it's, it's behind their body. You can see why it's given. Exactly, that's what I should have um, said, it was behind his body. So in that way, was it a bit unfortunate? Because if he's got his hand behind him and it's hit his hand, I mean... Yeah, I mean, look, if you know, if you're going to say a 50-50 or something, I'd say that's probably 80-20 against the penalty. But you know, that's the referee's decision, not not mine. Um, I wouldn't give in it as a penalty personally. Have the rules not changed this year, Kev? I really don't. They know. changed at this level. I really don't know anymore, to be perfectly honest with you. But if it was in the other penalty area, which is always the way I like to judge it, we'd be screaming for a penalty. Would it have been given in the other area? Who knows? Um, I'll let you know. Because the they wanted a penalty. Um, they wanted a penalty in the first half where he didn't give yeah. the penalty yeah. I think Dennis has done well there to get his body across the guy um, the guy's gone to ground uh, you know, not a dive or anything like that he's, he's gone to ground, it's more two bodies coming together than a foul um, but yeah, Dennis has done really, really well to get back and get his body in between the player and the ball and uh, you know no penalty for me that one though no. So it was a close game and then we, we take the lead for a penalty of our own 
Um, yeah. Golden got injured in, in the lead up to the, to the penalty. Well, look, Golden hasn't started a game for a long time and he's absolutely chomping at the bit as well as a couple of others to, to start games, which I respect. You know, every footballer wants to play as many minutes as they can. Um, he's gone in today. We, we don't really expect him to get through 90. I would never dream of telling him that before the game, but um, we, we need to get him back up to the fitness level and the quality that put him in top scorer in this division at the early part of last season. Um, and he knows that he's a long way from his best, but he also knows that with our support and with him putting the groundwork in, he'll be back to his best very quickly. Um, but he is capable of getting you a goal out of nothing or creating a chance out of nothing. He's a very, very difficult uh, striker to mark and um, I'd hate to be playing against him. And he puts his body in positions that make defenders make decisions and when they get them wrong, don't be surprised if, if you know he gets something for the side. And um, yeah, he's sort of been wiped out on the edge of the box there. After an injury, their player he stepped up and taken the penalty. You know, a little bit of mind games and nonsense behind the the goal, and um, got his belly out again. But yeah, I'd like to see that belly. That's the thing. It's the belly disappear. comes out, and you walk away with three points, though. Yeah, it's lovely. But we, we, we've we've um, we've took the lead, and have we thought we've won it? And then they've done us on the set piece. No, I don't, I don't think so. I I wouldn't allow complacency to set in, and Grads and Ben certainly wouldn't. And I would hope that the players would never do that. But you know, they were tiring. It's another set piece goal. You know, Should he be getting an easy header at the back post like that? No, I mean, both goals are, you know, the, the penalty was won through a similar situation. I think we need to anticipate that better. Um, that's for us as a management group to organise the players better. And if we do that and the players don't then execute what's asked of them, then, then obviously that's on the players. But at the moment, I think um, myself and the rest of the management team are, are happy that that is on us and we need to get, get those boys drilled better there's a lot of people that are dropping their heads in that situation and maybe they're on the back foot rather than the front foot that's got to change it's a mindset thing so if they get their heads right we'll um we'll support them and uh and we'll eradicate those errors quickly any of that um letting a goal in from a set piece at the end anything to do with substitutions i mean josh who, who done well you know and then sub substitutes coming on and not knowing who to pick up can you put any of that down to that uh you shouldn't do, no, and that would sound like an excuse again for me, which I'm, I'm not prepared to accept. I, I would be happy to say um, that players do need to take more responsibility. The leaders on the field and the more exp experienced players need to marshal the troops around them. There's a couple of young ones that are very capable, but you know it's their first season at this level. Maybe they need to be a little bit... Um, not manipulated, but you know, told do this, do that, as opposed to relying on them picking it up. Uh, and then us as a management team, yeah, we, we need to keep instilling that. And it will come with games again. You, you, we haven't played for what two weeks. Everyone else is three, four games ahead of us. So I think practice makes perfect. And um, if we keep making mistakes like that, one or two things will happen. It, it will be um, eradicated because personnel will change. Um, but I would much prefer and be more confident it will be eradicated because we will ensure that the players are better drilled. Um, Dan probably made sort of more saves today than their goalkeeper. Did we work their goalkeeper enough throughout the game? No, we got in some good areas. So it, it, it took us a while to get going. Uh, I think we should have had more efforts on target. But, you know, to Fisher's credit, as I say, they defended pretty well in the main. One more thing, their bench, we do know they do like to keep on their players at the linesman at the referee all game. What's it like for you over there on the other side of it? Do you have to bite your tongue a bit? Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm happy to speak my mind, but I'm not really a ranter and a raver on a football pitch or, or anywhere else. And, you know, if someone else wants to do that, that's up to them. Is that down to the referee and the linesman to control that then? Yeah, I respect their opinions to do it. I don't have any, any problems with that. I don't think there was anything um, on the field that was difficult for the referee to manage. Um, you know, a couple of yellow cards, but nothing major. I don't think there were any tackle, you know, terrible tackles. There was one two-footed in the air, I thought. I thought that was a strange yellow card. He's almost had a kung fu kick with both his feet off the air, with his with his feet up around an ear hole, and it's a yellow card. I couldn't understand that. Well, myself. you know, as they say, everybody's got an opinion, and I, I think there, there'll always be the odd decision that you're scratching your head about. But I don't think there was anything that was game changing. So no, that's 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 fair enough. Um, I understand there's been some of that game changing stuff at another Welling game today, but everyone can go and do that <laughs> okay. later. Um, Can't control that, unfortunately. Other, other, other than that, anything else? Anything else to, you want to say? Well, yeah, I, I, I thought about whether I wanted to, to say this, but you know, the, there was an accusation made as I came back out for the start of the second half that I don't like. Um, I, I don't really know uh, 
anyone at Fisher at all other than one player. Uh, you know them from the circuit, of course, you know, but I, I don't know them well, I don't talk to any of them, other than one player that was formerly with our club. Um, there's been an accusation pointed in my direction as I've walked out for the second half, um, getting called certain things that I don't like being called. And I'd just like to make it very, very clear um, that anybody thinks that there is any insinuation of any wrongdoing on my part personally or the club, I can assure you that is not the case. Do you think some of that's just a bit of mind games to wind people up? No, I think they mean it. Okay. I think they genuinely mean it. I think they genuinely think that, that something's happened, but you know, I'd like to assure them that there hasn't. Um, whilst I don't know them very well personally, I have no reason to like or dislike them, um, but I don't appreciate being called some of the things that I was called, especially without foundation. And I think as um, one of the few chairmen and managers of a club, I believe that my club should conduct itself professionally and correctly at all times, on and off the pitch. You know, I'm not in that manager just wants to get a result, not really bothered about all the off-field stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, relates to, to talking to individuals. Um, I don't really want to call out any names or anything. One of the people involved, I don't even know his name, frankly, but... Um, yeah, our club's not about that, and um, yeah, hopefully Fisher will take my comments as uh, sincere and genuine, whatever they may think that they've heard otherwise. Absolutely. Um, and with all the games being called off for floodlights, COVID from other teams, you'll have to excuse me. Uh, when are we next in action? Next? <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're meant to be playing Canterbury next Saturday, but it's already been postponed. I believe that there's a function on a bank holiday weekend. Is there a chance of a friendly on Saturday? Um, no. No, not with a game on the Monday. No, I think we'll train twice this week, so that will either be Saturday. Uh, sorry, that will either be Tuesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Saturday. Um, so yeah, that game against Canterbury on the 28th is off. Um, we, we'll need to make sure that there are two intense training sessions this week to get that fitness level up, because not playing games regularly is going to start hurting us. Uh, not just in terms of fitness, but. Um, relationships on the pitch and patterns of play and things where, where people aren't playing football together as much as they, they normally would do and as much as other teams are. Um, and then the next game is obviously the Bank Holiday Monday away to Tunbridge Wells. We should go into that nice and... Um, fired up. Nice and fired up, nice and fresh. Uh, looking forward to do ourselves justice and um, if it's anything like the game where we played at down at their place this time last year, then it should be a cracker. Yeah, let's hope it's not another bloody tool draw though. Had well, enough of them. Okay, thanks for that. I think I better go and find some food somewhere. And yeah, then, uh, hopefully there's some pizza left. We'll, we'll, I don't think there will be, but um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see you um, probably after Christmas. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cheers. Cheers, mate. <laughs>